So I'm going to talk about drug-induced liver injury today, and I'm specifically going to try to sell you on this pattern-based approach, not unlike the one that um, Dr. Pai mentioned for evaluating colonic biopsies yesterday. You all know that, I know that you don't like livers and you put them to the bottom of your stack, but after this lecture, you're gonna be asking your partners to give you the liver cases because you really like to look at these cases. They're, they're difficult to do without clinical history and laboratory data. That's a little bit easier these days with the electronic medical record. And drug-induced liver injury, or DILI, is always a diagnostic consideration to keep in mind. And to keep track of all the possibilities, you really need to take this pattern-based approach. I want to point you to this really invaluable uh, website. If you just type in livertox.gov, you'll find this. And this is an NIH um, effort, and it's just an invaluable resource for looking at all sorts of medication-associated uh, liver injuries. And I'll show you how it works in a moment. So we're going to use this pattern-based approach, and I actually like to uh, not know any of the clinical history or laboratory values, but just look at the slide and assign the pattern that I see. And the pattern, each of these patterns that you see here, and we're going to go over all of these, have a different differential diagnosis that's more limited than everything that can occur in a liver. So we're going to cover these hepatitic patterns. We won't have time for the cholestatic patterns. I've talked in this venue in the past on these, and um, they're also very important, but we don't have time for them today. And then there are these rarer patterns as well. So there are a variety of patterns, but each of them has a limited differential, and so let me show you how this works. So we're going to look at the case without any clinical history, assign a pattern, and then look at the clinical history of the labs to make sure that we're right. We're not always right. Sometimes you have to start over. My fellow always likes it when I just go completely down the wrong path. Um, but you have that as a check. And then you consider the differential based on the clinical information. So this is the acute hepatitis pattern. At low power, you have a lot of lobular injury here, which kind of dominates the, the, the picture. Um, there is always in acute hepatitis a little bit of portal inflammation, and I think the common error that people make who don't do a lot of liver is as soon as they see portal inflammation, they start thinking about chronic hepatitis. There's always a little bit of portal inflammation in acute hepatitis, 